Good morning. Welcome to worship on this day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we are gathering here this morning in the home of our Heavenly Father, we know whenever we're in our parents' house, we are home. So whether this is the first time you've ever gathered with us or if you have been gathering with us for years, welcome home, everyone. And speaking of not gathering for years, it's been two weeks and I feel like I don't remember how to do this anymore. How about we sing? That sound good? All right, I'll invite you to get up out of your seats and we'll join together in our first hymn. <laughs> gather our hearts for worship on this day we know that there are those things in our lives that stand in the way of our relationship with our maker and so now I invite you into a time of mutual confession as we join together in the brief order found on page 56 in our hymnals we gather this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Almighty God to whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a moment now for personal reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways 
to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us join in reading responsively from Psalm 112 as printed in your bulletin. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in the commandments of God. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. They will not be afraid of any rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. Let us pray. O God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son, that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
Good morning. Our first reading today is from Proverbs 25, verses 6 through 7. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. And our second reading is from Hebrews chapter 13, 1 through 8, and 15 through 16. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hostility to strangers. For by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourself were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all and let the marriage bed be to be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your lenders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and into, excuse me, <laughs> imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. That first lesson might just set the record for the shortest lesson ever. That's true. Amber keeps getting nailed with both of them. All right, we only got, kids, you wanna come up today? There's only a few of you. You wanna have the day off? Oh, no, they're coming up, okay. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Do you, uh, do you ever look at, at the world that, that we live in and just see things that are so amazing that you're just like, wow, that's really cool? What are some cool things that you guys have seen that sometimes make you go, wow? Can you, can you think of any? You saw a person jump off a building? I hope it was a short building. No, it went, ooh. Not in real life. Oh, that was a movie. Okay. You know, <laughs> yesterday I saw something that um, really made me stop, uh, and it was it was something in nature, but it was actually right here at the church. I was I had come over to the church uh, in in the afternoon, and I w- was walking back out. And as I walked out the front door, which is just right over here, uh, as I turned away, I noticed that there was a bug, uh, an insect that was sitting on the wall. Of, 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 the, of the church, just sitting there. Have you guys ever heard of a praying mantis? Yeah? There, have you ever seen one? Yes, I've seen one in my driveway. You saw one in your driveway? You saw one at the park? They are weird looking, aren't they? Have you, yeah, they're really long, and their heads are weird. Like, as I looked at this one, I was like, whoa, because at first it kind of startled me. I didn't realize it was there. And then I, I l- looked closer at it, and the thing went, and it looked at me, and I got a little bit closer. And then, have, have you ever seen what a praying mantis will do when it, get, when it feels threatened? It's, it's funny. It goes like this. It, 
it gets big to try and scare it away. And you know what? It kind of scared me because I know they've got those little pinchers and I didn't want it to pinch me. So I backed off. But I was thinking about that yesterday because it was so incredible. I didn't even realize that we had praying mantises around here. I, I've, I've seen them before, like in, um, in, in zoos or in books or in videos, but I didn't realize we had them around here. And I was just amazed at this, um, this bit of nature, this bit of creation. And I was thinking about that, actually, the song that we just sang right before, right before your mom got up and read for us, the wonders that God has made, this world that God has made. And it's full of incredible stuff if we really stop and pay attention, all kinds of amazing things. And the coolest part of all of it is when you saw a grasshopper? Yeah, they're cool too, aren't they? The, the thing that I love the most about all of this is that God made all this really cool stuff, and then God looked and decided this world needed one of you, and one of you, and one of you, and one of you. And so God made each one of you too, and that's pretty awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's say a prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the wonders of this world that you have made and that you have given us. And we thank you that we get to be a part of it. Help us to always appreciate uh, all that you have done for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up, everybody. <laughs> he can hang up there with me if he wants to. <laughs> If you really want to lose some time, go to Wikipedia and look up praying mantises. There is all I did that last night too, because you know, fell down the rabbit hole, but it's all good. I invite the congregation to rise now for the gospel. Our gospel lesson for today, the twelfth Sunday after Pentecost, comes from Luke chapter 14, verse 1 and 7 through 14. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. But when he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, Go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, people of God, may the grace and peace of our triune God be yours today and forever. Amen. So... A week ago, my son went off to college, here. Last night, my daughter was babysitting. Now, this is not the first time that my wife and I were home alone, but we were home alone and we did the most exciting thing possible, we sat and watched TV. The show that we are currently watching is The Handmaid's Tale. Perhaps you are familiar with this. It's a pretty popular show, it's on Hulu. You can watch it if you want to. It's based on a book. And the premise of this book is odd. You can watch it if you want to and kind of figure it out. But the idea of social hierarchy is very, very prominent within the setting of this, this story, of this show, or, or the book that it's based on, to the point where a person's social status determines the color that they wear. They're, all of their outfits are the same based on their social position. The, the high-ranking men wear black, lower-ranking men wear kind of a dark gray. For the women, the, the, the wives of the powerful people wear like turquoise blue. The handmaids, the, 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 the title characters, they wear red. Uh, there's, there's other groups of women that wear kind of a, a sagey gray. Young girls wear pink. I mean, your social position dictates the color that you wear. 
and it's very, very, very rigid. If, it, if, if you're familiar with the story, you know that their social position does not change. Now, it's that idea of social position, social standing, that I'm kind of grabbing onto as I'm thinking about this, this story that we've had for today. And it's, it's interesting, this situation that Jesus finds himself in when he, in maybe one of the only times he really ever does this in the Gospels, he begins to zero in on the idea of social standing or the social ladder or where your, your position is in the, the social type situation. Now, what's, what's interesting is perhaps this is kind of a, a little bit of a foreign idea for us. It's not really the way that our society works, unless you're like in junior high or high school, there's always a social hierarchy there. But it's kind of different for us. But in Jesus' day, there was some similarities to, to Handmaid's Tale in terms of, of your social position dictated a lot. It was determined by your, your ancestors. It was determined by what clan you were a part of or what culture you were a part of or what nationality you were a part of. All of that kind of fit into the mix as well. And it depended on what job you had and sometimes it even determined what kind of a job you had. So in Jesus' culture or in Jesus' day, social position was very, very important. And in particular, if you were in an individual community, everybody knew where everybody else kind of stood on that social ladder and it would determine all sorts of things for instance if you got invited into a banquet or into a dinner it even determined where you would sit at the table the really really important people would sit right next to the host and the less important you were the farther away you were now Jesus has been invited <clears throat> has been invited into a dinner now we hear that they're all watching him closely and then we had that little gap in the verses, and I kind of laugh about that gap because initially Jesus is like, mm, rules, I don't often care about them, and he heals a guy on the Sabbath. That's what we skip over. That's what the people are watching to see if they're going to do. And Jesus is like, I don't care, I'm going to heal the guy anyway. But once that's done, and that little bit of back and forth controversy has happened that we skipped over today, then everybody kind of shrugs their shoulders, and they go back into the normal aspect of this dinner. And Jesus is just sitting there, and I can only imagine he's just watching fascinated as the different people are jockeying for their social position. Imagine being one of those people. Okay, who's here? I rank higher than that guy. Okay, I'm going to move up here. Yeah, yeah. He's cooler than me. Okay, back down. This guy right here, oh, we're about the same. All right, I'm going to eyeball you. Are you going to sit here? Am I going to sit here? Where are we going to sit? Who's sitting where? I'm going to sit here. You're going to sit there. I don't know. Like, it would have been nuts just to watch. And Jesus is looking at all this. Now, again, Jesus usually doesn't seem to care about this sort of thing at all, does he? He's constantly going over social uh, boundaries, social rules, overcoming them in order to bring whatever individual he's encountering into a life of fullness. That seems to be what Jesus is all about. But today, he starts to offer some social advice, doesn't he? I could almost see him writing a Dear Abby letter right now. Let me, let me tell you how to do things in situations like this. And he says, when you go to a dinner, when you are invited to come into a dinner, and you walk in, do not take the place of highest honor because then the host is going to come in and be like, there's someone more important than you. Move your keister on down the row and you will be humiliated. Dun, dun, dun. Rather, Jesus says, rather, when you walk in, take that lowest spot. So then when the host comes in, he may say, my friend, oh, you are so important. You are so cool. You need to move up here and everyone will love you and it'll be glorious. Isn't that basically what he says? Anybody else scratching your head like, Jesus, what are you talking about? I found myself doing that a lot because I wondered, why does he care? Jesus never seems to care about social decorum. So what is it about this moment that he really zeroes in on? Maybe he's almost given a big wink to the camera and reminding us that all of this social standing in the long run, does it really matter. Now, he then goes on and things kind of shift gears. And maybe he starts to talk about the other side of this. He says, when you are having a banquet and you are inviting people in, he says, don't invite the ones who have high social standings, the ones who can repay you, the ones who will increase your prestige and make you look cool simply because they came to your house. 
or maybe they'll pay you back and it'll all make you look good. He says, no, invite the lame, invite the poor, invite the ones who have no way of repaying you. He says, you will be repaid in the resurrection of the righteous. Now that sounds a little bit more like Jesus, doesn't it? He's talking about all of this different stuff. And maybe, just maybe, as he gives us one side of the coin where it seems like, what are you talking about, Jesus? And then he gives us the other side of the coin that sounds a little bit more normal. Maybe he's letting us all in on the joke. And in the eternal sense of all of this stuff, all that effort, all of that tension that we put into, how do I stand socially, maybe it doesn't really matter. There's an old expression, maybe you've heard it. The one who dies with the most toys is still dead. This life, full of its ups and downs, its back and forth, its good stuff and its not so good stuff, ultimately ends the same way for each one of us. And it's because this world, good, is not perfect. And our lives, which God calls good, are not perfect. We are all still uh, partial, we all still experience the brokenness of this world, the brokenness that's a part of us, and ultimately it ends in death for every single one of us. Well, what the gospel tells us, what the gospel is honest about, is that yes, this is the reality, but God is doing something about it. Whatever it is that Jesus was accomplishing through his life and his death and his resurrection, which would happen in Jerusalem, he was somehow overcoming that broken reality. And he's making it possible for all of us to receive the truth of the resurrection, whatever exactly that means. Now, what's interesting about this strange little back and forth, these two sides of the coin that Jesus talks about, is in both cases he's talking about invitation. When you are invited into a banquet, don't worry about where you sit. Or when you invite someone, invite those who cannot repay you. Invitation is at the heart of this gospel lesson for today. And I really like that because to be invited indicates that someone wants you around for whatever reason. They want your presence. They desire your presence. And the more I thought about all of this, I thought about the heavenly banquet that one day every single one of us has already been invited into and we will experience, and that invitation comes from God. It happens through Jesus. Jesus has made the invitation possible, but that invitation that goes to every single one of you says, you are my beloved child. I desire to be with you. Jesus has made that possible. So come into the banquet. The table's already prepared, and it is for you. Amen.
Our service now continues as we offer back to God that which he has first given us with our offerings. As we collect our offerings, some announcements to share. Uh, first, uh, heads up, anything that needs to go into the September newsletter, if you can have that into the office by Tuesday, Tanya's going to put that together here in the next couple of days. Uh, coming up this Wednesday for our uh, confirmation families, we'll be having orientation for the uh, upcoming confirmation program. Uh, this is really aimed at our incoming seventh graders, uh, eighth grade families. You kind of know what things are going to look like. So uh, if you cannot be there, that is okay. Uh, but that will be this Wednesday evening at 630. Rally Sunday is coming up two weeks from today. Uh, very exciting for that on the 11th of September to kick off our program year uh, with uh, Sunday school and confirmation. Uh, Jay tells me he's got an adult class that's going to be starting up again and choir as well starting that day. Sure. I think I just put Arla on the spot there. She wasn't quite sure about that. Yeah, I suppose we could sing. Yeah. But uh, so that will all be kicking off in two weeks. And that will also mark our change on the Sunday morning schedule. Uh, next Sunday, the 4th, uh, still 930 for worship. That will be our last time on the summer schedule. Um, and then the following Sunday, we will make that switch. Uh, the last thing I want to bring up is just kind of continuing to give a reminder of some fundraising efforts that we are doing to offset the cost of, of updates to our HVAC system, uh, that if you would like to be a part of that and uh, lessen the impact on the endowment fund for that, physical donations can be designated towards the building fund, or if you give through Vanco, off also designating building fund will help offset that cost. So just note that that is the situation there. With that, I'll invite the congregation to rise now as we join together in the prayers of the church. Lord in heaven, on this day which you have made, we gather our hearts and our minds together, connected through the power of the Holy Spirit and united as a community of faith. We thank you for the gift of community and the opportunity to worship as we do. We ask that you would continue to connect us with all of the body of Christ around the world and empower each one of us to be your hands and feet. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, the teachings of Jesus remind us of the importance of humility and the danger of actively seeking out prestige and recognition. Help us to be mindful of this in our day-to-day -day lives that we may honor one another rather than ourselves. Remind us of the invitation that you have given to each of us as your beloved children to be a part of the kingdom of heaven, and may we find our worth and joy in that knowledge. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Spirit of God, we pray for all those in need of your healing touch. We ask that you would be present with any who are suffering today, whether it is physical or spiritual or emotional. We pray for those who are battling illness or those who are recovering from injuries and medical procedures that they would find healing. We pray for those whose mental well-being is a struggle that they would find peace. And we pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones that they would be comforted. We remember especially today Janet and Galen, Karen, Waverly, Maisie, the leader's family, and any others that we hold in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, as we move from the season of summer into the fall, we are mindful of many changes. As many schools are now back in session or will be beginning soon, we continue to pray for our young people in the year to come, and we pray also for the teachers and the staff. We also pray for the new program year, which we will start once again here in our congregation, as well as the programming in other congregations, which will happen as well. Lord, in your mercy. God of all the world, we pray for all those places which are experiencing the extremes of weather, that they would be protected. Remember those who continue to deal with extreme heat and drought, but also those who have experienced dangerous storms and flooding in recent days. Keep all people safe from danger. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we continue to pray for the favorable conditions within the fields as we move ever closer to the time of harvest. May the crops continue to develop through these final weeks, and when the harvest is done, may it be plentiful. Lord, in your mercy. God of all people, we pray for those who find themselves lacking on this day. 
guide them to the help and the resources which they require, and help all who have more than they need to help provide for those who have less. Place it within the hearts of all people to see one another as you see each one of us, so that all people are treated with dignity and respect. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we pray for all those in positions of leadership and authority at every level around the world. Guide them in the work that they do and the decisions that they make. We pray especially for those working in places and situations of tension and conflict that they might achieve peace. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, Lord, we pray today for those who do not know you. May the gospel of Christ continue to move throughout the world and touch the hearts of all people so that one day all may come to faith. And to your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. People of God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.